Hi, I'm uh, Bob from Alpines, and we're today we're going to go through our track No Other Lover, which is uh, one of the singles off our album Oasis. And um, yeah, we're just going to talk about uh, the process I went through to make it. The reason I decided to pick this track is because usually Catherine, who is the singer songwriter in the band, she she usually comes up with the song first. Um, but this one, it kind of start, came from an, an initial idea I had. Usually when I, when I start a track, it's, it's because I've heard something that I like and I want to try and incorporate it into an Alpine song. And this time it was around the time that Julia Bashmore's Oh Serve was just absolutely massive. And I wanted to kind of see if I could work that kind of big bass line into an Alpine's track. We're kind of doing it our way. And then that was sort of combined with the 50 cent song AO Technology, which is, yeah, yeah which is, a, is quite fun. And it's got this sort of uh, like eight bit kind of really old school synth line. And I wanted to sort of see if, I, I obviously don't have that synth, but I wanted to see it. where is it? This kind of, this kind of vibe is, uh, basically wanted to see if I could work that into a track. So let's go. What I do is I, as I go through the track, I kind of save it periodically as a new version so I can go back to the original and look at kind of, kind of some old ideas uh, and kind of if I, if I kind of do something I don't like and need to go back then I can always do that. I mean this is, this is the kind of the first initial idea, it's just that kind of synth sound and uh, a kick, you know, really that simple. And this synth sound, I think, it, I, I use a lot of just the built-in logic stuff. I mean, I've got some some sort of third-party stuff, but I just like keeping it simple. And this is just the ESP, the sort of polyphonic synth that comes with comes with logic. And I think I just used one of the presets, 80s bass, and kind of played around with it a bit. And um, it's kind of, yeah. I just, and I think this here, this is it without the bit pressure. No, no, I think I'm just using the arpeggiator here, which I understand they built the arpeggiator into Logic 10, uh, but in Logic 9 it was a real, I still use Logic 9, I haven't upgraded yet, but it was a real pain in the ass to do, I can't even remember how to do it now, it's something in the environment which I don't think anyone ever attempts to go to because it's, it's pretty complex, but um, I did it this time. So yeah, I just kind of added a bit crusher to that and got... This kind of kind of squash kind of eight bit kind of vibe. Let's see where I went from there. So here we are on kind of the second version of the project. I've added this organ in, which again is just a built-in one of the built-in logic synths, uh, EVB3, which I can, I think I used this for the bass as well on this track. So um. Yeah, it's just, it's just again, it's just kind of got some of the built-in plugins, tremolo, flanger, um, and you can see I bounced that arpeggiator down to MIDI because obviously it was confusing me that environment window stuff. Um, and I think if I remember rightly, I yeah, so Catherine's probably come in and sort of heard me working on this track and just chucked in a few kind of. Vocal ideas, and that would have probably been just as it comes into her head. I try and get her to record it as quickly as possible, just in case we forget what she's come up with, basically. Um, and then, kind of, you can worry about getting the lyrics and everything spot on a bit later. I think, like, when the way we work is kind of melodies more important than kind of making sure you know exactly what the lyrics are straight away. And now I think I remember rightly. I've just kind of looped everything, and I think I remember this happened. It suddenly, it was just the bass and the drums, and I was like, "Oh, that sounds really cool." Ooh, you know, we should try and make that kind of the drop, and I think that's kind of how the track developed a bit. So, yeah, with the organ, it's just I think yeah, it's the same chords as as the um, arpeggiator. Like usually when I work, I just get one chord sequence that I like and kind of stick with that, uh, and I leave the sort of diff changing chords up to Catherine. The, sort of pianist because she's a bit more talented when it comes to that kind of thing but um yeah I, I honestly don't remember i think i probably just started with a preset for the organ um and let's take these plugins off you know i think i would have added this tremolo just to kind of give it kind of a bit of rhythm 
and the flange kind of makes it sound a bit more sort of soulful, I don't know. Um, yeah, again, I just I just like using the built-in plugins because they're dead simple, they don't take a lot of processing power, and I, I just like to work quickly and you know get the get these ideas down and kind of move on to the next thing. Um, at this stage of the song, I wouldn't have been worrying too much about the sound in itself. I'd be like, okay, that sounds okay to me. Let's let's add, you know let's worry about the drums now or whatever. Um, and see, yeah, that's basically it really. I mean, I've EQ'd it a bit, kind of. Just want to just want to get rid of the kind of the low end and leave leave room for the kick and bass for that. And um, yeah, then I probably would have been thinking about the beat and, and stuff. Okay, yeah, with the drums on this track, I think I would have just started with kind of again. I just like using ultra beat for the, the drums because it's kind of what I got used to uh, when I first started producing with Logic, and I find it really easy. Um, and I think on this, it's just kind of one of like the really default 808 settings. Um, you know, like the kick, I think we'll move on to this later because I change it a bit, but it's kind of just, just, just so we can get the song down. I've just kind of got this, got these really, these really basic sounds. So the bass, this would have been kind of one of the early things that I wrote for the track, just, just to get the part down. And I remember playing around for ages, trying to find kind of the right thing, uh, you know, looking at using third-party plugins and something a bit more kind of advanced. But I remember just, yeah, this is the same plugin that, that, that I used for the, for the sort of main organ sound. And I found a preset that I really liked. I think it's, yeah, it's just house bass, uh, funnily enough. But it, I think I played around with the draw bars here and just kind of got it a bit bassier. And then yeah, we got Decapitator, which I use a lot, probably too much. I just think it makes anything sound cooler, really. Um, you got to be quite subtle with it, you know. I find if you start pushing the drive kind of over, you know, six or seven, it starts sounding a bit silly. But um, yeah, it's great for getting things just sounding a bit more aggressive. And um, yeah, I think I, I think I might have worked on that a bit later, but that's kind of the essence of the sound. It didn't really change much. I mean, with with regards to the the sort of the kick and the bass and how they they work together. I mean, I as you can see, I mean, there's no processing on here at the moment. I mean, at this early stage, I would have just kind of left it, and I tend to leave more technical things like that up to the mixer. Like we 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 work with a really good mixer called Miko Gordon for the album, and I kind of, I, I feel like when in sort of dance music and electronic music, there's been a real sort of melding of what it means to be a producer and a mixer. And I think that's great because, but I, I still think they are both quite distinct things. And I definitely see myself as more of a producer. I mean, I, I, I know a little bit about mixing, but I just, I think it's a much more technical skill. It's, it's, it's you can still be creative with mixing, obviously, but I, I tend to leave those kind of things to the mixer, like like really in-depth EQing. Kind of, I, I only EQ to if I want to change the sound drastically rather than kind of getting it all to fit. I think that's all, all that stuff is all the job of the mixer, which, so I don't, I don't really do it, to be honest. So here we've got, um, this is sort of version three, and Catherine's clearly written a bit more of the vocal, and that's come in, and again, I haven't worried too much about the sound of that right now. I've just, I mean, I mean, it sounds really crap, actually. I mean, it sounds... I don't think it's come through the preamp or anything. We probably just plugged a mic in and went, okay, just get it down. And I think that's a really good way to work. If, if you've got an idea, just, 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 just put it in. You can always record it again later, you know, like, don't worry too much. It, I think the, the idea and the song is more important than kind of what compressor you use and you know how you how you cue it, especially like when you when you're trying to be creative. And you know I've added a few more ideas to the beat, and yeah, just 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 kind of throwing a few more things into the mix. Um, you notice here on the master bus, this is something I didn't I couldn't really get to grips with for ages when I was starting. It's kind of when do you put when do you put a, like a, a kind of limiter on the master bus or when do you process the ma master bus and kind of a lot of producers kind of just whack a limiter on straight away um, and 
I, I, I kind of did that for ages, but it, it resulted in my mixes being really, really loud when it got to mixing and the mixer was like, you know, dude, I had, I had to do so much gain stage to get this, to get this sorted. Um, in the end, you know, so, so someone sort of taught me to kind of keep everything a little bit quieter, keep it up sort of about minus six before it goes to the master bus and try and keep the, the master at around zero. I mean, I probably didn't manage that on this song. Oh no, it's not, it's not clipping. But um, yeah, I really just, a little word about master, like sort of the master bus. I really love these uh, plugins from Sonics. Um, this, oh, they've got a limiter and this inflator, which I can't really describe what it does. It's kind of, I use it just before the limiter and it kind of just gives it a bit of, just, just, just a bit more loudness and it seems to manage to do it at the, without any expense of, of the song sounding worse, which, which sounds almost um, impossible, but you know, it's great. It's kind of, it's got this effect, which uh, it just kind of, I can know, I kind of see it as just loudness. You, you can boost the input here, but this kind of changes the perception of the volume. And it's just, it's just a really cool plugin that my mixer sh showed me. And um, yeah, I use it all the time alongside the limiter. You know, when I send this off for mixing, I will just, I will just save the whole session with all the assets and Kind of when it gets to the mixer, because he uses Logic as well, he can just take everything off the master bus and do his own thing. So the kind of anything I do on the master bus is just for listening purposes. You know, you kind of when you bounce the demo down and you're listening back to it on another stereo or in the car or whatever, you kind of want it to sound a bit louder than you know a, a bit closer to what it's going to sound like when it's finished, just so you can get excited about the track and kind of you know, help help yourself feel good about what you've done. You know, it's just that's the only reason I, I kind of use any sort of mastering plugins on on the uh, on the app on the main output. I, the other day I organized all my logic sessions in by year, which is is very geeky, I know, but um it's kind of it's helped no end when you're thinking, oh what was that track? I can't remember what I saved it under, but if I can just you can just look like by by year and it kind of really helps. Whatever help, whatever works for you, I think it's best to like, organize your sessions some somehow. And you should always, always, always back up your sessions if you can. Um, I've heard some really, really, really bad horror stories about about people losing data. And you know, my my friend's band had like had lost a laptop in a taxi, which had their whole album on it, and they were lucky enough that the taxi driver handed it in, which was which was brilliant. But they could have lost their whole album, you know, a year's worth of works. It's, it's just not worth it. So invest in a hard drive or some cloud storage or whatever it is and, and back up. Okay, so here I've kind of experimented with adding another kick. I think it's this sort of, this is this Lin kick. A lot of the samples I use just are the ones that came, came with, came, come with my, came with my MPC. Um, and that, the MPC comes with a really good, you know, classic sample pack like you know all the all the famous all the famous stuff and some other bits and pieces and I, I, I find that's that's all I need really I keep I keep it in in a folder here um, not very well organized but you know I've got some all my all the kicks MPC song all the MPC songs in here and you can see they've got you know lots of great the old Lynn stuff Bolin stuff which yeah which is all really good and Someone gave me these uplifters and downlifters recently, which which are uh, all really useful. They're all massively over the top, but if you just try and control them a bit, that can um, that can be really cool. Yeah. Oh, there was something funny in this version. Uh, if you hear that, that's I, I do this a lot actually when I come up with a drum idea or something that I want to hear, but I don't, I can't think how to do it. I will just get on the mic and sort of beatbox it. Uh, it sounds ridiculous, but again, it's, it's just what about getting, getting the idea down as quickly as possible. And I didn't end up using that because obviously it sounds terrible. Um, but you know, it's, I, I just think that's a good way to, to be creative. Is you don't want to worry too much about the sample straight away. You just, when you've got it in your head, it's important to get it, get it out and get it, get it on the, get it in the session. Sometimes it will make the track, and like there's there's a there's a song on the album called Love Blue, which has got me kind of like, and it sounds like something from like Street Fighter or like a Kung Fu movie. But it's uh, sometimes it just works. It's good fun. On this version, I think I added some some more drums uh, from my 
R8, which is, yeah, just these kind of hats. These are all from the R8, which is kind of just an old rolling drum machine. I, I don't think it's particularly popular, obviously it's, it's not it's not analog like the like your 808 and 909, but it's kind of it's kind of cool because it comes with these little little ROM cards which you can buy, which kind of have extra sound libraries. And this one, the electronic ROM, has basically all the 808 sounds. So with the R8, which I think goes for about 100 quid, and then this, which goes for about 50 quid, you've sort of got yourself a an 808. I mean, obviously, it's, it's not analog, it's kind of digital samples, but it's kind of, it's just, it's nice to have the feel of the pads and kind of that famous sort of 16-beat 16, 16 loop. It's just fun and you can, you can play with the pitch of the samples and I think, you know, I've sort of messed around with the hats and I really like the hats on this as well. They just kind of cut through really nice. Yeah, it's just kind of a nice little creative tool. I, I don't use it on every track, but it's, it's, it's nice to have something that you can actually touch and, and you know, use rather than just clicking a mouse. Yeah, this version we actually finally get to the, what ends up being the final kick. Uh, so, which, again, it's just one of the kind of presets. Let's have a look at Ultra Beat here. It's just their kind of vintage 08 kit preset, I, I think. And it's, yeah, one of, it's the, one of the synthesized ones. It's not actually sampled. Um, and I might have played around with the envelope a bit, you know, just to get rid of, just to keep it nice and tight. And, um, but yeah, to be honest, I, I think it's probably just pretty simple. I've added this Enverb, which I think is a really cool plugin. Um, just, it just kind of, it gives it a bit of kind of, it's, it's obviously a reverb, but it kind of, that's it without it. And it just, I don't know, it just kind of makes it sound a bit more like, it's in some dark cavernous club or something, but without without getting being out of control and having like this super long reverb tail. Uh, that's all for now. If you want to see the rest of the interview, check out the latest issue of Computer Music. Thanks very much. Download over thirty exclusive plugins. Get hundreds of pro quality samples, and power up your production skills with in-depth tutorials. We break it down for you step by step and you'll see exactly how it's done in expert video guides and producer masterclass sessions with pro producers. Get all this and more with Computer Music Magazine every month on iPad and iPhone, PC and Mac, Android, and in print.